And I, I kind of wanted to start off, if you don't mind, just uh, reiterating your name, your character name, and if you don't mind, what class you main. I know a lot of Black Desert players like myself play multiple classes, but there's always yeah. that one we latch on to. Right. I just I, I want to be able to reference that in the article if possible. Absolutely. Yeah. So my online family name is Aydon, A-Y-E-D-O-N-N-E. -E. And my main is a wizard, and my character name is Merlinx. And I live on Bal Balanos 4 in North America region. So that's where my home base is. Mm. And I've been in the Cheese Puffs Guild for about two years, maybe. Okay. Um, yeah. And so that's kind of the landscape for me. Okay. And do you want me to use your real name in the article or just your character name? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Jeremy Cheramella is my real name. Okay. And, uh, I don't, I, yeah. I mean, I'll probably, in the context of this, I mean, I, I've, not been interviewed i've been interviewed before for different reasons sure sure <laughs> but, but never for um an mmorpg context so i'm i'm you know i'm used to my real name but whatever the convention is that helps you write the article i'm open to yeah we'll typically use both so i'll, I'll typically introduce you with your real name and your character name kind of in quotations gotcha. um but then throughout the piece i'll use both interchangeably to kind of break up the flow a little bit so it doesn't look like i'm just overusing one or the other Makes um, sense. But I always make sure because some people don't want other people knowing they exist on the internet. And I know with some people's jobs and stuff, you know, having your name out there isn't necessarily great. Mm. So I always like to ask. Um, I the contrary for me. So it's good. Yeah. No, there's a, uh, a longtime EVE Online player who was like one of the great EVE Online space lords who's actually a right wing lobbyist in Washington. And he was using his real name in the game and <laughs> had his EVE Online profile on his you know, lobbying Twitter account, and it ended up biting him in the butt. So I always remember oh that um, when I'm interviewing people who may not necessarily want their full name out there. So, mm. uh, yeah, that's that's the context for asking that. But like that makes convention sense. is, you know, to use them both. So got you. Um, so how long have you been playing Black Desert? Uh, let's see. So a little over, let's see, four years. No, wait, 2020. Yeah, over four years. Right around COVID is when I dove in. I okay. came from a RuneScape 3 background, an old school RuneScape background, and saw the game trailers and was like, hmm. Because I was at a point where I was a little disenchanted with RuneScape, but kind of finished all the content and material. And I was like, what is this new thing? And yeah, fell in love with the game since then. And it's been my passion hobby since. Awesome. That's interesting. RuneScape um, it has come up every single interview I've done uh, so far is kind of like people's first main MMO is my first main MMO as well. Um, did you play any other MMOs besides RuneScape at the, during those uh, years or was it pretty much all all RuneScape? I think it was all RuneScape. I don't remember having a... I mean, I did dabble in WoW briefly, but it didn't really mm. catch my attention. I did try Evercrack. Um, <laughs> and yeah. I, my brother-in-law was addicted to that game. He played that game incessantly. But I played it like a little bit, but it just didn't grab me. Sure. Um, I was more into uh, like a lot of the, I like stuff with story bases and r that have an RPG vein in them. That's broad. Mm -hmm. For example, I, I grew up playing on a Commodore 64, the SSI simulations pull a radiant series, which is a mm -hmm. Dungeons and Dragons themed game series. And so okay. games like that, that have a strong, strong quest, strong storyline, strong lore, you know, those really get my attention, and and uh, that's not where, at the time, where EverQuest was at, and WoW was kind of developing it still. It was kind of, you know, uh, but I just I just didn't get drawn into those for some reason, so. Sure, sure. Yeah, no, I was the same. I played RuneScape, you know, in high school, and because it was free, and my parents couldn't really afford uh, a powerful computer. My dad was military, and so the, they don't pay military members enough even still. Mm. Um and so, like, I, RuneScape was, like, my escape. I had friends on my uh, street on the Air Force Base. We all played together. And I didn't really, like, get into the 3D MMOs, per se, till like, you know, Lord of the Rings Online in 2007. Right. So I, I didn't even play EverQuest. And I really never played WoW. So it's interesting hearing someone who, you know, you're probably a little bit older than I am, but kind of coming from the same entry point, uh, despite that, so it's it's interesting. Like I said, the other guys I, I spoke to that you know we we talked to the other night, they're younger than me, so mm -hmm. hearing them say RuneScape wasn't surprising. But 
uh, hearing you say RuneScape is, because most people, I think, your age and my age kind of started on EverQuest or WoW yeah. or something like that. Yeah. So. The, well, the and, other one was Diablo, Diablo 1 and 2, but not MMORPGs, but they sure, are sure. in the same kind of, you know, it's 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 the same isometric, you know, 3D vibe where you're walking around as an adventure. And then there was also Ultima 7 and Might mm. Magic 3. These are all games that I've played. Yeah, Might Magic you know, 3 i played incessantly. And and then uh, Wizardry um, and Bard's Tale. These are all games I also played, like Bard's Tale 1, 2, and 3. Mm -hmm. and Wizardry as well as... Um, Gosh, was that one? I, yeah. So basically, you know, any any RPG flavored computer game that had good quest lines, good storyline, I was drawn to it. And and you know, I think Black Desert definitely delivers on that. I mean, I, I've you know quested to P. I've got like twenty something thousand quests. I'm going for the thirty k quest title. So <laughs> you know, I'm into that sort of thing. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, so. If you don't mind, um, how uh, how did you come about speaking at the event? Like, was it something that you reached out to Pearl Abyss saying I kind of had a no. story, or did they put a call out for that? They put a call out for me, like they had a memories contest uh, two years ago, three years ago, two years ago. They said, you know, uh, you'll get these in-game rewards X, Y, and Z if you submit a photo and an account of one of your favorite memories in RuneScape. Or sorry, in Black Desert. Brain fart. I'm going to drink more coffee real quick. <laughs> You're good. Just by the juice of sad food that keep my mind in motion. It's become a stain. The stain becomes a warning. Sorry. Mm. Doing reference for those of you who care. But anyway, the, the thing is that I, I, so I took pictures. I took these pictures anyway. Uh, me and my daughter went on a daddy date. I took pictures. I loved it. And then I saw the memories thing, and I thought, well, if I win, I'll get a free mouse mat, nice mouse mat, and um, you know, I'll get some stuff in in game that I could use to to advance my character. So sure, I already had these pictures anyway. So and it was kind of a fun thing, my photo album anyway. So I just posted it on their community forum, and then they sent me a, a little handwritten note and a mouse mat and my in-game items and said, hey, congratulations, you won, you know, uh, the Traces of Memories event. I was like, cool. And I got a killer mouse pad and a little card. And they sent me something else. I can't remember what else. Another piece of swag. And then, um, you know, uh, the online stuff, the game in-game stuff. And it was, I thought it was really cool. And I didn't think anything of it. And then they reached out to me and said, hey, at this event in your area, you know, we'd like you to speak about and share this memory from the traces of memory event I was like, in my mind i'm thinking well that was like two years ago almost but sure um you know my kid is not playing black desert anymore uh i think it was just something we did to bond over and then she's doing other things now she's into learning japanese and mm. that's kind of what she's doing you know she's that's very cool uh i mean my 16 year old is fascinating this <laughs> blows my mind being a parent is one of the coolest things ever it really is it's, i know it's, Mine is turning yeah. 15 next month, so. Yay! Yeah. i got to teach mine to drive. She she doesn't oh. have to drive stick yet, so she, that's like, whoo, boy! <laughs> I tell people it helps my prayer life a lot, you know, I, I know she's going to be driving. As, as, so my daughter has nystagmus, which is an eye condition. It's a congenital eye, eye condition that if mm. you ever see her, you know, her eyes never stop moving. As mm. a result, though, it's low visibility. She's basically legally blind, which oh. I think... You know, when we first noticed that about two months after she was born, um, it was one of those kind of gut punches because we weren't sure how good the eyesight was going to be. The eyesight, you know, comparatively to other people with nice admits is actually pretty good. She competes in fighting games. She's a fantastic artist. But I feel like I dodged a bullet that she'll never drive. So I never have to worry about teaching her and then have that, you know, anxiety over the first time she's driving to school or something. So I think in the next 10 years, when you buy a car, it'll have auto drive anyway, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. where we're headed. So it's like, yeah, you know, At the, the point, interesting yeah. thing is I had a friend of mine who had that. He had that oh, really? condition okay. where his eyes twitched back and forth consistently. It ne he never gave a name for it. I just knew yeah. he had vision impairment, but he, he could play basketball. He could do a lot of normal things, mm -hmm. but he um, couldn't see and he couldn't drive, but he actually is uh, like, I don't know if he's still doing this, but he was, he became a radio DJ. Oh, cool. So his voice was amazing, like yeah. his speaking voice. And so 
you know, you met the guy. He sounds super charming. He's very witty and stuff on, on you know, on the air. Mm -hmm. Then you meet him and you realize what what's happening there. You know, you, you understand <laughs> obviously some disability. You sure. realize that with any sensibility. But it's like, oh wow, wow, you know. Yeah. But he was a very successful guy. You know. That's that's interesting because my daughter is she wants to do voice acting. So we're doing there's a voice acting guild here in Vegas that Noelle's part of. She's doing a competition next month um that'll put her in front of some voice acting execs so it's interesting that that she's leaning into that as well her voice versus uh anything visual despite being you know an absolutely stellar artist she's always been an artist um so yeah just bragging about our kids here for a second <laughs> you got to do that it's the parent yeah. thing come on yeah man. it really is it really is um <laughs> so it's it's interesting. So they, they reach back out to you. One thing I've noticed with Pearl Abyss is they read everything and they remember everything. I still have them bring up quotes and articles that I've forgotten I've ever written years ago when we talk. Just not the press that they remember everything about, but they seemingly, you know, took your memory and locked it away in a vault because it meant something to them. Um, mm -hmm. So that's interesting to hear they reached out to you uh, after the fact, um, mm -hmm. years removed from that. Um, Cool. So I know you told your story at the event. I obviously wasn't like recording anything then. So if you don't mind just kind of going through the memory and what you shared on stage, you can be as detailed as you'd like. Uh, again, this is basically just going to be for transcription sake. So we're not going to be you know, posting the audio or anything like that. But uh, anything yeah, you want yeah, to uh, anything you want to say about the memory and kind of what Black Desert meant to you. Uh, it sounds like this was a great way to. Uh, bond with your daughter during mm -hmm. one of the most more trying times we've had, you know, in mm -hmm. the last 20 years or so. Right. Well, initially I wanted to find something to stimulate my kids' imagination. I wanted to find something that would connect us on a different level, somewhere she could exercise your creativity at and say, at the same time have fun and hopefully be able to do something with me uh, because we weren't going places much. We weren't doing a lot of extracurricular stuff during COVID. Like, it, it was just a bizarre time. And so looking for things to do together indoors, games to play indoors was a pretty much a priority for me. And so when I discovered Black Desert and started playing and figuring out the game mechanics and how the maps worked and after navigating all the complexities of the game, you know, I realized it would be too much for my youngest but perhaps my oldest. And so she had an interest in, you know, the Lord of the Rings and, and movies like that. She was entertained by that sort of thing. Um, and so I said, hey, let's let's go on a daddy date, but we're going to do something special. And she was all excited about it, you know, when she was a bit younger. And I said, so we're going to go someplace kind of outdoors. And she's like, what are you talking about? And so I said, let me help you make a character. And then me and you are going to go on a daddy date. I'm going to make some food in real life. And then we're going to take some food in the game because you can take like meals in the game. And we're going to go to this really beautiful place where the mountains are misty and there's a wonderful view and there's like like sheep and, and stuff kind of calmly grazing around you. And it's really pretty. I'm going to go up there and take a look around and hang out for a while and then maybe go kill a bad guy or two and go imp hunting. And it made it a little date. And so we went to... You know, we logged into the game. Well, she spent like, oh my goodness, she must have spent like the like a day playing with her character's colors and dyes. And she is a very visual, you know, she's a wonderful artist. My, my daughter loves to draw all kinds of things. She's an uh, advanced AP art student, all that jazz. Super into that element of creativity. So she was like enamored with the game's ability for you to customize every single aspect mm -hmm. of your character from their face shape to their eye color to I mean if you could conceive a slider or a coloration or dye element it's it's in black desert uh it, it she was very just had a blast doing that and fell in love with her little shy character which of course the shy characters have certain you know, emotes and stuff that totally remind me of my daughter, frankly, because my daughter is is a very, you know, kawaii kind of, you know, uh, she leans more to Japanese than she does towards my lineage. Her mother's mm. Japanese. And uh, so, of course, this this cute little character. So I took my grizzled old wizard, which I, you know, didn't really try to make look like me too much, but kind of, you know, because, you know, I, I've always played wizard characters. It's kind of my archetype anyway, so. 
uh, at the end of the day, we went to um, Lynch Ranch together and just talked, took some pictures, talked about the game, talked about how she felt about COVID, just, just had a conversation, you know, and her computer, she was using uh, this ROG laptop at the time that belonged to the, the church we're a part of, it is a media thing and she could so she could play the game on that and she, she was using that one at the time she was sitting next to me in the uh, editing area uh, on that machine and i was sitting on next to her on my my, my standard desktop and, and we just talked and we had our lunch together in game and and in and, and real life and then afterwards i think we went in punting and then you know it was just fun and it was a fun way to bond and the pictures i thought really captured it you, you know the characters can have certain types of emotes when they sit down and when they are lounging, and they and they make these periodic emotes, they're they're designed to make these periodic emotes where they will, will you know sigh or they'll shift a little bit in their weight. It's it's pretty cool how they set the animation up. And so I got I got lucky and I got a few pictures where it looks like they're talking. And you know I thought oh this is gonna be cool. I was put this on my my channel. You know I'll put this on my website or my 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 feed or whatever as a cool memory. You know and then I saw the uh, memories event. Traces members event. I was like, oh, this is perfect for that. Sure. Free stuff if I win. And I wasn't thinking, I'm gonna win. But they contacted me and you know sent me the killer mouse mat and a cool little handwritten note from one of the GMs. And and then they invited me out to the Oasis thing. And I was really surprised that they remembered this and that it meant so much to them. Earlier when you mentioned them having a vault of things and they really listened to their player base. I mean, that's very much the case and it's challenging i think to do that it's challenging to to have that kind of collection and have enough of it to be able to withdraw from you know and then being able to speak the oasis event i thought to myself well here's a chance to really meet and connect with this community and the leadership in this community and learn more about the game's dynamics in real life as well as online and, and learn more about the player base overall and learn more and connect with people. And that's mm -hmm. to me what made, you know, the Oasis event really special to me, being able to speak at it. And, you know, I was again, surprised at the invitation because my, the traces of memories event happened a couple of years ago, but it was still, it's still a fond memory though. I mean, I still, it, it brings a nostalgia to the game itself when you have experiences like that, especially with kids or with friends the, at least the social element of the game and the memory element of the game is it's, it's part of the human experience you know um putting that in the context of a game though uh i don't know that they can actually do that to me that's special yeah so, so did your daughter play with you uh beyond just that that first uh daddy daughter date or was it mm -hmm. that just kind of a one-time thing that was well that was a one-time thing to introduce her into the game but she played off and on we we did go uh, on a couple adventures when she was doing the questing she had a boss she couldn't beat at one point and i wanted to help her with the boss and we found out that you can't do bosses together and the you know so i ended up helping her with the gear and stuff the complexity of the game is beyond just the creation of the character and the nuances therein there is complexity in the game itself is how gear works how leveling works mm -hmm. how the keystrokes work for each different class the there's a layer of complexity of the game that you know you don't have to dive into completely in the deep end when you first start playing there are quests and stuff that you can go through that help you piece together the different elements of your character's abilities and your classes nuances if you take the time to do that but she was you know, I think that, that was kind of a barrier for her at the time. It took more time for her to learn the nuances to get to a certain point where she'd actually go adventuring with the guild and go adventuring and doing okay. some of the shared content that is uh, arguably a little bit more challenging. <clears throat> and so she she didn't get to that point. But she still logs on once in a while to do life skilling, and she'll log on once in a while to knock out a quest. So she hasn't, like, totally distanced herself from the game. But, you know, there was a... A learning curve that at the time I don't think she was really willing to persevere through, and so yeah. she played less and less and less and tapered off. But you know, once in a while she'll jump on and we'll 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 do something together or we'll connect or she'll 
say, oh, dad, I played the other day and blah, blah, blah. You know, another limitation is the hardware that she has. She has a pretty weak laptop. So, oh, uh, for sure, sure. Yeah. She told me she'd want to play with me more when she had a game computer that could actually handle it. So I was sitting at the Oasis event in my heart <laughs> thinking, okay, God, please give me that video card because I can set my kid up with a That'd be nice. It's a know, great graphics push. card. Yeah. It was like they were giving that out. I mean, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Like at, at the Calfion Ball in LA in 2022, they gave out two entire computers. It was kind of insane the that amount of awesome. stuff these these devs give. Um, the graphics card is, I think, is the best graphics card they've ever they've ever given away. They were always get, giving away six series graphics cards, which are fine. You know, they're they're mm. good, uh, and they'll play Black Desert just fine. But that graphics card they gave away the other night is one of AMD's top cards right now. Mm. It's like a 4K, you know, capable card. So. Um, That's crazy. I actually have See, one, like right behind me. Kind of gear before. <laughs> <laughs> I do all of our graphics card reviews, so I've got a couple right behind me. Um, cool. Yeah, that's that's cool to, to hear. Like, I tried doing this with my daughter, and I think part of it, you know, was the l low visibility. The game we were trying to play was Lord of the Rings Online, because that's my favorite MMO. Mm. And um, I wanted to kind of share this with her, and she was excited, you know. But... Um, the UI in that game is not really scalable, and so it's very hard to read if you can't really see it. Mm. And we ran into some visibility issues with that game, but I think like now it's probably something we could probably do. Um, she plays a lot of Genshin. She plays a lot of you know fight, fighting games are her thing, which is mm. great because we I never thought she'd be able to play those games because of her eyesight, and mm. she's better than me. So <laughs> and I've, been, I've been playing them since I was like ten, you know. So, uh, she's competing in Evo this year again. You know, she's gonna That's compete. Exciting, dude! Yeah, Come she's gonna on. compete at level up uh, over uh, in April. So, um, it's really cool hearing like how these games can bring families together. Aww. Which I think we always think about how they can bring strangers together, right? We think about um, people who've met their life partners in in these games or people who have made lifelong friendships. But one thing I think doesn't get explored enough is how these games can help bring families together, whether it's just spending more time with a loved one or using a game to help get through a difficult time. Like mm -hmm. you guys were talking about COVID um, or, you know, maybe there's a something going on at school and this is how you cope. You know, you and your friend, you and your family were just hopping a game and talking through while you're bashing some monsters in, you know, so. Uh, I think that's a really, that, that's honestly, it's your story that got me thinking about writing this entire article because that's kind of what grabbed me, you know, doing things with my daughter, doing this exact type of thing with my daughter. Mm. Um, so it's it's really heartwarming to, to to hear that this kind of stuff still goes on, you know, mm. with, uh, with parents. I, I think so many parents nowadays, they just leave their kids to their own devices. And I'm guilty of that a little bit. I think all of us are, but... Um, that desire to connect on a more meaningful level um, is something that inspires me whenever I hear it. So, um, yeah, a little bit of rambling. I, but my, yeah. my, I, I gave my son an account to play with, mm -hmm. a character to play with, two characters. And the first one, he, he, like my daughter, was fascinated with the character creation process. It's one of the best. And he was like trying to see how bad he could make a character look. <laughs> and I'm trying to find the picture because it is so hilarious what he came up with. I, sure. I video, I actually, oh, I captured this over OBS, what he did. And I was like, this is, dude, you are hilarious, man. <laughs> He's just, a, his sense of humor is, it's, it's just, my goodness. Yeah, that um, sounds like my kid. A, I was going to ask too if you don't mind uh, sharing some of the photos you took on that uh, during the day you spent with your daughter that we can share if you're willing. No, I don't mind. Let me um, see if I can. Find I think they would add add uh, to the article for sure. Um, Let's see. Yeah, you can just throw them in Discord. Uh, I'm going to probably finish writing this up tonight, and it's going to go live tomorrow. So um, I'm actually waiting to hear back from Pearl Abyss on some photos from the event. So I've got some time. Let's see. These are older, so. 2002, I think. Let's see. Maybe. Let's see. Let me find them. Oh, yeah. Here they are. Yeah, I'll just send them over. It says you can Perfect. only do 10 at a time, right? I'll send them all uh, to you, and you can pick whichever one you want to use. Yeah, for sure. Sure. 
Um, yeah. So the only thing I really have have left is um, what keeps you coming back? What keeps you engaged with Black Desert when there is just a multitude of choice out there? Uh, especially, you know, every single game seems to have a multiplayer aspect now. What mm. specifically about Black Desert keeps you coming back after all these years? That's actually a really good question to think about. First of all, there are there's a sense of immense investment in the actual character development mm -hmm. from creation to level 64 where I'm at right now. There have been a lot of milestones and the game is multidimensional in terms of what you can do and where you can advance. For example, there's a tremendous amount of content on the ocean and I love the sailing element of the game. Additionally, throughout the oceans, except in the places where it's denoted as very, very, very deep, like Magoria is an area where the oceans are represented as extremely deep. I've swam to the bottom before in a couple of places just to see, but it's not, there's nothing really, there's no content there. However, in the shallower areas towards the land masses and throughout the island chains that's around the main continents, there's absolutely stunningly beautiful underwater activities from life gathering to even finding the hidden ruins of Sicria underneath the ocean where you can like go into this ancient civilization and there's a whole lore behind it and the seas above you and you're fighting these semi-aquatic themed creatures. It's mind blowing how much they've developed the content. So it's, it's the concept of being able to explore a very vast area and most of it is done very, very well. And on top of that, the sense of developing your character, the character's abilities, the character's advancements, the gear that you can get to do things. For example, getting dream horses. It's a, I used to have, I still have, I have a couple of them actually. I'm trying to go for mythical, but the Pegasus themed horses. To go up to the top of a mountain where you can see all of Dregan, the beautiful crags up there. The game is just gorgeous. Mm hmm and then taking flight over the entire thing and flying, you know, three quarters of the way to Heidel from there and seeing all the, you know, ground beneath you. I mean, I use that, those screenshots as my, my channel uh, on Twitch. That's my channel art, my YouTube channel art is that stuff, those flights flying over the scenery. It's just, it's a breathtakingly beautiful game as well as the environment. Uh, the NPC and the lore. Some of the secrets, hidden quests that you can find, like there's a kid in Calfion. If you just happen to talk to him, he's scribbling on a wall. It turns out that he's actually the son of one of the lords, and there's a side quest where you can basically help him reconnect with his parents. And it's it's like this whole soap opera side lineage thing where you get a special teddy bear about a teddy bear title because you help this kid reconnect with his family and this homeless mm. kid reconnect with his. I'm like tearing up playing this quest at one in the morning <laughs> thinking i gotta get up for work the next day you know what i'm saying yeah and, and i've been there you, you 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 just go huh somebody somewhere thought about this and made this tangible you know um some i mean i've done enough enough of the quests where a lot of them i spam are on but once in a while i run into one i've never seen before and th even the new attempts at the the bosses the land of the morning light was a Keep coming back was what we're talking about, right? Like mm -hmm. new content where they're trying something new. Even though arguably there were elements that weren't as successful, the Land of the Morning Light was a completely different um, language in terms of the storylines. Yeah, I they loved were all Korean-based um, lore, Dokebis, and the, 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 like what they consider fantasy. And then the Songakshi and these other monsters that were some of them were absolutely creepy and terrifying and. Mm -hmm. Like some of them had deeply saddening stories that were just deep tragedy. It was just very to me. It's like reading a novel that is still being written. Like to me, I look at a game setting because I, I do a lot of Dungeons and Dragons writing as a dungeon master, and so I, I'm like, man, when I go to a place where I see somebody took time to write lore, story, art, all that, those pieces together, it's like being in a movie. Or, or, or seeing a book come to life, or to me, it's it's analogous to excellent quality literature, you know. And I'm not saying that 
you know, Black Desert is on par with the literary force that's Lord of the Rings. I'm saying that sure. it's in the same, the vignette of what makes Black Desert so appealing to someone like me is your participation in the storyline, is your ability to, you know, fly around the world on the back of a winged horse. Like it's, it's you know, outside of flying on Falcor himself, it's like a dream come true for <laughs> a gamer, you know? And sure. uh, so, you put all that stuff together and then you add elements of advancement and progress and investment. It's 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 to me it's it's role playing online at its finest. And so it's the combat system too is another big win. Like I I main a wizard, but let me tell you, I, I've really fallen in love with some of the mystic the mystic class and its combat mechanics. I've enjoyed learning how to play the scholar. Um I've tried to play every single class that I can so I can understand the game's mechanics and just see if there's one I like more. And I keep coming back to the wizard class because I think it's my staple. It's what I'm comfortable with. But but I, I will probably end up playing Mystic a lot more because I really like the, the character's movement, how combat feels, how you can string combos together. Mm -hmm. like And that's just one vignette. Again, one little sample of the game's dynamics. If the game didn't have the massive amount of variance, like the environments, the ocean environment, you know, the different landscapes, the land of eternal winter and how beautiful that landscape is, how they captured the desert. See, I lived in Arizona for a great deal of time. Mm -hmm. I'd go out into the desert to hike, to kind of find respite, and I'd come back to Black Desert, and there were plants that I saw in the Sonora Desert that I would see in game. I'm like, I recognize that plant. I've walked by that, but here it is in game. Things like that, where I'm like, how, wow. Like they, yeah. there was, yes, there is of course fantasy elements. And you, if you look close enough, you can see reused models and things like this. And can you, you know, that, that that's normal yeah, for any everything. game, but it's, it's so subtle though. And well done. You rarely feel like ho-hum. I've been here before ho-hum. No, it's 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 uh, you know, and I you know I've, I've been playing avidly for four years now, and there's so many different ways you can play this game. That's another thing that keeps you coming back. If I get sick of ocean content, then I can go grind in in, in a dark crypt somewhere. If I get sick of that, I can jump on my Pegasus and fly around and, and run errands, you know, uh, dropping stuff off. If I it, there's so many different ways to play the game, so that's to me what makes this the biggest straw and you know i think it can learn they can learn things about um storytelling from games like runescape they can learn things about mechanics from some of the fighting games which i see like this i mean this game could arguably a decade ago could have just been a fighting game between class a and class b well and they tried that too uh they, they yeah. launched something called shadow arena which did not do well at all um yeah. so they and definitely we... tried to to spin that that aspect off because I think the combat is one of the more unique aspects of the MMO. There's a lot of action combat MMOs out there, but there's not a whole lot of combo based action combat games. A lot of times you still have projectiles on an invisible string and all that stuff. Mm. Um, in this game, everything is affected by physics, you know. So yeah, there's a yeah. there's a lot <laughs> there's a lot that, that they've put into this. Um, very very true. Cool. Uh, well, I think I've got everything I need. Um, if there's any follow-ups I have, I'll, I'll definitely reach out. Um, and then once the article's live, I'll uh, I'll, s I'll send you the link on Discord, so that way you can share it around if you'd like, uh, share it with the guild. Um, if you don't mind, you, you did mention you, you uh, stream on Twitch. Uh, do you mind just sending me the, the, the Twitch handle? That way we can link back to it in the article, too. Um, sure, sure, sure. Uh, so people can put a face to the name if they if they follow you. If you can get some follows, I guess uh, through the article. Oh, that'd be really cool. Yeah. Um, I can't guarantee that, but you know, it'll be, no, it'll I be nice. I understand. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> pining for that. I mean, if I get some followers from a cool, if not, I mean, my Twitch content is pretty. You know, I, I go out with my guild once a week, and that's kind of the extent of it. Sometimes I'll find something really hilarious in the game, uh, and I'll put that up. You know. Like I found a, a character, his name is Brody, but he calls himself Buddy. And so I like <laughs> made fun of it and sent it as a bug report, put it on my channel, stuff like that. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's my in-game game. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, no problem, man. Been a pleasure. Great. Yeah, for sure. It's been great talking to you. Take care.